Greetings and salutations, Tube Dwellers. Welcome to a very special application. This is not StarCraft II Wings of Liberty. Oh, no, 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 no. This is StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm. Yes, I am in the beta. No, I do not have the beta. I don't have a beta key myself. This is a friend of mine. Uh, this is the account that he has set up. Um, but I am in the beta and able to play. I'm on his account, it's on my computer, it's going to be my games, my gameplay and my commentary. As you would expect, uh, we're going to be doing this from replay, so this isn't going to be first person, but we're going to take a look at a game I played a little earlier today. This match is going to be a Zerg versus Zerg. We are on, uh, ooh, man the map name, oh boy, uh, Star, what is it, Satellite Station, Star Station, uh, Something like that. I think it, it's got a star in the name. Eh, I'm going to have to look that up at the end of the video and let you know. Uh, anyway, between, uh, of course, yourself, the Mad Bag Gamer, uh, playing as Andronor in the bottom right, the Blue Zerg, and Shadow Anthem, the Red Zerg in the top left. Now, uh, I played this guy twice in a row. This is actually the first game I played against him. I played against him again right afterwards. Um... And we were both choosing random, and we got a totally different matchup the next time. I think it was actually Terran versus Terran right after this. Um, I'll have to go to that game and get just a little snippet of some uh, chat that happened in it where he asked me my league. I said I was Diamond. He said he was Diamond too. So though I'm not ranked right now in this account, I do believe this is about a Diamond on Diamond level. You guys have seen my recent Zerg. It's about on par, uh, plus a little bit of oddity because I'm thinking about Heart of the Swarm stuff. And then, uh, I don't know, have a little bit of faith that this is about a diamond level Zerg as well. Now, uh, he's going gas, and uh, it looks like I've already passed the point. Actually, when I build this next drone, I'm past the point money-wise. Once I build this next drone, though, I'll be past the point of uh, going for a pool into hatchery. Oh, there, I finally built it. That drone's actually way late. Um, but the hatchery's going out. It looks like I kind of decided to do that late, and I actually gave him a chance to block it, but luckily he didn't. Um, he's getting a nice little overlord spread, and he's got the scout in my base, so uh, he knows a lot more than me, and he is going a more aggressive build than me, because I've started with a hatchery first. It's going to take me a while to get lings out, and I'm actually going a little greedy. I'm going to go gas before putting the pool out. That's going to allow me to get a faster ling speed, but slower uh, first four to six zerglings, and he's going to have much faster both. <laughs> he's going to have a greatly fast link speed because he, he went gas before an early pool. Uh, but he's not going to have the expansion, so it's a trade-off. A lot of times the trade-off that he's taken means he needs to be aggressive. Maybe that he wants to be aggressive. And the trade-off that I've taken, oh, and what is this? Is that, uh, is that I want to go macro style. I want to end up in that part of Seoul, South Korea, that the Gangnam style song is all about. I want to be from the Gangnam district with the money coming out my ears. Ah, ah, what's that? I got you. Little drone coming into a spine crawler just within my vision, sadly, because of the pool. Now, look, if I had put my spawning pool back here, then uh, there would be a thin rim of shadow right here where I can't see the edge of my creep because the building view distance is actually shorter than the creep spread distance. Luckily though with my spawning pool placement I could see it and uh, now I'm even going to get the little drone that he scattered in here with. Now it did delay a little bit of mining time but uh, I also kept him from doing that nasty damage. Now it looks like he's produced six lings so far. I don't see any more in the cooker and I don't see any more leaving so yep it's just going to be a total of six. He knows he's got the pool earlier than me and he's actually going to have a really good timing for uh, this aggression. Now, my two lings are caught out, but right now it's serving kind of a good purpose. Uh, drawing his zerglings away for just a little bit, that might give me time to get a queen up, and a queen can be a huge boost in zergling on zergling wars before speed comes into play. Oh, but speed is just about to come into play. Not for me. He gets one drone. Speed's about to come into play in a big way for him. Oh, and I'm just going to get myself surrounded. And now I'm going to get a queen surrounded. That is enough zerglings to kill the queen. One inject off of her is not a good trade. I don't like how things are shaping up for me already. There is big damage happening right in my face. Now I've got a lot of zerglings coming out. But I am only halfway done on speed. My speed research for the zerglings is woefully slow. I do have a baneling nest coming though. 
And he now has speed. I think he's even got more Zerglings than me. The Count says he's beating me by three. Ah, that makes a bad case for this hatchery survival. I am getting more Zerglings. However, I just now started a good pack. Eight coming in. Still a good ways away from speed. With the Broodlings, he's afraid of me. But for how long? I'm getting one Baneling now. I know it's a, it's a kind of a teetering situation that I'm going to have to be real cautious, probably expand, and try to make sure I stay alive as cheaply as possible. Now, my Overlord has spotted, I just now got done moving him in, that his hatchery's up and finished. This puts me at quite the disadvantage. Um, you'll see even in workers, uh, it's slight, it's only one, but in mirror matches especially, that drone count. That one drone does make a difference. He's got a huge, actually, no, that's my larva count. I wonder if it's counting those. It's got to be, right? Yeah, I have a huge larva count. And a decent bank, so that production is actually going to put me above him in drones. Oh, and here ships pass in the night as one army goes right past the other. I just now got speed myself. And in he comes. Now, I'm too far across the map by the time I see this. So I'm going to try to do some drone micro. And I'm just going to have to take the pain. I have a queen spazzing out. The drones are on hold position. Not, they're not attacking. So that got as much done for the queen as possible. But now, the drones are on I'm dying position. Oof, I wasted a baneling. I did take the, the uh, zergling count, though. He has one spine crawler, a second coming in in the main. Oh, and what is this one Baneling going to do? Perfect hit. I got all four of his Zerglings. My Zerglings are in the mix. The Spinecrawler goes down. The next one's being targeted. And I've got good surround on the Queen. Now, what's going on in my base? It looks like I've hatched just a few Zerglings. And I have a nice hefty drone count still. The drone count actually is heavily in his favor. So, I saved a lot considering the situation. But, by no means do I still have a lot. He's still beating me by five. And he has a nice setup in the natural. However... He can't quite get the production out to deal with me and his main. And this, this all of a sudden, though he has a higher drone count, if I actually take this down, well, I guess we'd be even, right? Oof! I can't believe he actually got my main. I am building queens now. Uh, he likes the situation. This is very comical to him. He knows that, uh, that things don't look bad for him. <laughs> yeah, right. Things, uh, things look, I don't even know how they look. Right now, playing this game, you know, I'm guesstimating a lot. I have no idea how much damage I've taken and how I'm going to recover from it, how long it's going to take. And, uh, you know, I know how much damage he took, but I have no idea, really. I was trying to split up there a little bit. Took a couple shots at a Baneling, tried to take a couple shots at a Worker. Uh, had to end up dodging out. I actually have more Zerglings than him right now, and I know that that will allow me to kind of keep tabs on him, but I don't have enough to go in there and do any damage, so I'm going to try to contain him and see if I can just abuse it on the back end. Uh, it looks like I want to build another hatchery. It's a little premature, though. I'm a little uh, excited there. I'm not going to be able to get that hatchery down yet. The money! I'm down to just mining off the one base. I'm going to go ahead and bring my Zerglings home. He could sit here and make a pack of Zerglings, or Banelings even. I would hate to uh, lose my Zerglings. Now that I feel like maybe our footing is somewhat even, I know I lost my main. However, I kept my spawning pool and baneling nest. He lost his main. He did keep his baneling nest, but lost his spawning pool. I made sure I picked that off. Ooh, and he's going quickly into a roach warren. So uh, the drone counts really is the most interesting thing here, and he is smoking me. He is a good six drones up. That one drone earlier really did turn over well for him. I'm just now getting one gas, and he's getting ready to saturate two. With the roaches coming along, that's going to allow him to get uh, get a more powerful army. It may take him a while still to build up into, well, I don't really have that much of a ling count. I do still have a ling count on him, but I can't really do anything with it. So, what does that matter? An advantage unusable is not an advantage at all. Now, I'm getting my main up, and that's a major difference. There's not a main. Oh, okay, here we go. Right when I talk about it, sure, he's going to be like, he's going to hear me from the future. There in the past, and take the action. He is going to go ahead and reestablish his main now. And him still having me on the drone count, he's got me pretty hard. This is actually way oversaturated. You can see 29 out of 24. That's another feature of Heart of the Swarm, is that they give you a display, uh, a count on your base and on your gas. Uh, this count is exclusive to workers mining minerals. These counts are separate from that and exclusive to workers mining each of these gases. You can real easily though see what your saturation looks like. He knows that he can split honestly probably about eight of these drones about that many off to here whenever that comes up. 
And uh, looking at the same myself, 22, that's a little oversaturated. I would like to see some of that moved. And I bet it's probably going to happen real soon. Looks like I'm getting a little defensive, and I have a train of banelings going on over here. Looks like I'm sending some zerglings over. It looks like I want to get aggressive again. I kind of like that, especially since I know that the last encounter we had, I left with a slightly bigger army. So, uh, you know, you figure, if he's gotten as many drones as I have, then uh, he probably hasn't gotten as much army, and if he's gotten as much army, then, well, he's got to have fewer drones. That is, assuming that we were even on drones to begin with, and we weren't quite. But the army tab, as you can see, shows that I am still in the lead there, and I've just caught up to him in drones as well. Oh, nasty. I lost a lot of zerglings right there very quickly. Ooh, I damaged a lot of drones, but didn't actually get the kill on them. There's so many there in the low red. It looks like I did kill just a few drones as worker count jumped down from 35 to 32. I still set at 37, and that finally gives me a bit of a lead. His overall food counts got me, and that's because of this pack of roaches he just produced, and he knows that it is something to be dealt with. He knows that that is a bit of a timing right now, just having built one clump of roaches all at once. Big investment. Funny enough, at the 14 minute mark that I'm saying that nine roaches is a big investment, but the way this game's gone, it, uh, it sort of is. And I know that I'm gonna have to get defensive. Of course, I've got creep coming out a little ways. New creep animation you can see there. The tentacle going out to the new creep tumors. Oh, extra super, especially zergy and disgusting. Oh, cancel him! Cancel him, Madbog! Please get there and cancel him! You can't do it! Oh, he's gonna let that one go. That's fine. That's fine. Creep, uh, creep spread doesn't. I mean, it's vision still. That's the reason I creep spread in ZVZ. But uh, honestly, it gives them the same move benefit that it gives you. So there's not that side of the benefit to it. Oh, the zerg, the uh, banelings were left out while uh, my zerglings were able to surround his roaches. Whoa, that's dangerous. And I see it too. Oh, nice. I sent just a few in for the banelings, and now here comes the lot. The roaches are going down. So in the meantime. It looks like I've been able to drone up and am still a couple more drones, and that puts me in a nice size lead. Now, this is still kind of dangerous because he is on and capable of roach production, and I'm still on Zerglings. As a matter of fact, he's got a lair done. He's getting roach speed. Uh, he hasn't quite taken the gas in his main yet. Um, I am just now saturating my final gas, my fourth and final. Uh, and it looks like I've taken a lair as well, but I'm going a different route. I don't have a roach warren anywhere. Instead, I have two evolution chambers and an infestation pit coming up. So uh, Zergling Infester is going to be the order of the day for me. And let's see. Production of Banelings against Chewing Speed of Zerglings. What can I do? Oh, nice. I love how when the bodies hit, they actually slide a little bit now. That's new as a part of the swarm. New physics. It's just kind of cool to see battles unfold in ways that make certain things actually look explosive when little light Zergling corpses go flying off the side of the explosion. I like seeing that kind of stuff that little bit of realism. I know Hellions now, as they uh, as they cruise with their very high movement speed, if they die while cruising, you'll see a tire come flying out of the wreckage and uh, just absolutely smoke something else. Not that it does damage or anything, but it bounces around oddly in a neat kind of way. Halfway through pathogen glands, it looks like melee upgrades are going to be the way I go. Here come the infestors. Well-timed infestors coming right outside the pathogen glands. And uh, we're somewhat stabilized, so he's, he's droning up a little bit to catch up right behind me. Um, he's got the roach tech in a really good spot. He's actually going macro hatch. Um, he's got the one damage upgrade for his roaches. Hasn't quite started a second. He's got the gas for it. Actually, I'm looking at myself. He's got the gas and minerals for it. A third hatch. I'm the first to take the initiative. I feel like I've saturated two base as well, and I feel like I'm getting under the way to putting together an army composition that I can use to survive, if not strike back. Five infestors, that's a decent count. So let's take a look. A stock of the army, if you will. Oh, hold on. Hold the phone before we take an army stock. Let's talk about what the army's going to become. So up to now, this has barely even felt like a Heart of the Swarm game, right? Well, it's about to get real, ladies and gentlemen. Your host here, the Mad Bag, is getting enduring locusts which will allow him to have longer locusts from his swarm hosts indicating that he plans to build some swarm hosts oh yeah hydralisks what the what the hydras with the groove spines okay okay i can respect it hey look he's uh he's looking for mostly standard but maybe uh, a quick tech into hive with some hydralisk speed i could i could definitely dig that 
Or maybe just that I'm staying on Zerglings, he's got a feel of Mutalisks from me, and I've confused him and went over to Infestors. Of course, there's all the more reason to go Infestors now in Zerg versus Zerg, as well as any matchup, because it pairs with Swarm Hosts. So I'm building five. The research completes. Now, this one, you don't really have to time the research with it. You can actually build five first, and then start the research, and eventually when the research completes, it affects them. So getting the research first doesn't really give you any market benefit. Having the research definitely does. It makes them last, uh, is it 10 or 15 seconds longer? I actually already researched it. I know it's 25 now. The locusts that spawn last 25 seconds. And here, oh no, a miss rally! Oh, get down, get down! I'm not gonna burrow him in time! He is down. I burrowed these in time, though. And it looks like the first rally didn't hit right. The first rally left him setting. Let's see if I can fix that up and get a rally going on this second pop. And it looks like, oh, there I am, and I throw him, throw him that way. Uh, and he's way up on the food count. His army has taken off. Unit-wise, it's roaches, isn't it? Where's his roach count? Um, 38. That is a lot of roaches. Nice! I'm getting him to use banelings, though, on... Oh, no! The infester! I'm getting him to use banelings on locusts. Oh, and he's got the overseer. It hurts. Oh, my. They're so weak. The swarm hosts. Oh, they're so weak. But you know what? He doesn't have any infestors, and I've got fungals on banelings. Oh, I'm keeping him clumped. Oh my god, I'm keeping him clumped. Don't kill the infestors. I've lost... Oh, I've already lost two, counting that very first one that I lost. And he's... Oh, this is so close. His roaches are so low health, though. He knows he needs to get out. With all the free units, locusts and infested terrans, I just push him out. He uh, runs away scampering. I really like the combination of uh, fungals, fungals uh, to hold them in place while, you know, the cooldown on the swarm hosts goes away. Oh, I did get a couple more burrowed in the back there. And it looks like now I have a mind for being aggressive. Now, he attacked with a lot more food and he's still got a lot more food. But uh, he's got dim roaches. I've got food that respawns free food and makes more food and then food just spawns food. It looks like we're real close on the uh, drone count, and though he got his third up after me, he's got it up now. He's still got a food lead, and uh, he's got one more, literally one more drone than me after putting defenses down. So I guess, well, I've got defenses down already, too. I am saturating that third. That's a little advantage that I'll give myself. Other than that, though, ooh, and my bank looks ridiculous. So obviously, messing with the new unit, uh, I haven't at all thought about how the 200... Oh, it's actually right here. I was talking about this comment before as though it were in a different game. He says, what league are you in? I say diamond. Oh, oh, can you deal with it? What's it going to be? Oh, he's got a lot of roaches still. I'm going to start with the fungals. Oh, I need another fungal. This is dangerous. Ooh, can I get one more? I got one more fungal. Let's see it. Oh, am I not going to pop it? Oh, I so needed that fungal. I'm going to lose all my swarm hosts. UM. So apparently I'm asking him his league. Yeah, he says diamond as well. Oh, man. Tell me I lose this. I think I do. I don't think I paid any attention to it. Oof. We'll keep the cursor on it. If you see the uh, investor disappear, you'll know something's wrong. Hive has completed for me. Um, I don't know. I'm building 20 swarm hosts. Okay. It's getting ready to say I don't know what hive tech I'm necessarily going for. Uh, swarm hosts would be the hive tech. Uh, no, swarm hosts don't have anything to do with hive. Um, I could start 3-3 three, three melee. Uh, that would make me think that I should do something like Ultras. Ultras would be cool. Ultras with Infestors and Swarm Hosts. Ultra Zergling Infestor Swarm Hosts. Maybe eventually start getting these ranged upgrades because those help the Swarm Hosts and the Infestors. As well as Roaches, Hydras, Queens. That's a lot of Swarm Hosts. I wonder what, uh, exactly what I've got in mind. What, what I plan on doing. It's, it's kind of, these are a unit that if you, if you get together what you need to beat them, all of a sudden it becomes really easy to beat them. Uh, if you can't deal with it, if you don't have, like, you know, uh, good overseer coverage and uh, the timing on exactly when they puke all their little baddies out, if you uh, don't have that, then these things will own you. They'll just send wave after wave. Well, it looks like I'm sending mass expansions up the right side. He's got a taste for it, and he's out on the prowl. He is going to come right in here and start whooping some XP butt cheeks. I do cancel, that's nice, that's good. And that gives me all the foresight I need to get my swarm hosts. Oh man, kind of in position. Oh no. You know what? I don't there's no there is a spore crawler here, but it's way down low. For the most part I don't see this. 
Ah, uh, that spawn was about right. Oh, fungals are coming out. Oh, am I going to lose? I did not lose any infestors. Oh, if I could get some more fungals on that. That would be so perfect. Please fungal it. I'm not going to fungal it. He took out the hatchery. I am rebuilding it immediately, but that was a good hit. Now, he lost some roaches, but not a whole lot. You can see our food is kind of evened out because I'm finally using my bank for... Oh, man, if I knew about this. Oh, if I only knew about that. Whoo! He's got one armor. He's getting two. That makes me wonder... Oh! Ling counterattack. I caught it at the last second. I was just getting ready to say, I wonder. I've got 2-2 two, two for my Zerglings. He does have the two damage at this point. So, uh, his roaches aren't very far behind. A matter of fact... Roaches against Zerglings, I'd normally give it to the Roaches anyway, unless you have such an overpoweringly large amount of Zerglings that you can just totally surround him. Oof, that third still being down, this being mined out, this hurts. I'm taking a fourth here, and I got my fifth up, but that's kind of risky. All he has to do is spot that, and like a pack of Lings will totally deny it. I wouldn't be able to get up there and defend it fast enough because it's so far away. Tell me he's working on, uh, he's working on some tech here. He is getting that two armor, like I said. He's not... Uh, going up to actually does have a hive so that means he's got an infestation pit yeah there it is he hasn't gotten any of the upgrades on it and uh, I am finally going to ultralisks you see four completing right now let's see them comically bust out of the hatchery eggs blick blick em <laughs> gigantic uh, and it looks like we are dancing out here oh the perfect unburrow time oh my god please reburrow please reburrow there are some fungals the reburrow occurs oh and there is free army the fungals. Oh, he's already saying GG. Oh. And in come the ultras. Last fungals go down, but it doesn't even matter. Wow, that was really close. Uh, I guess the Zerglings uh, had a little bit to do with some of the GG too. Uh, one pack, all this blood. One pack of their uh, creeps had already made it up there. Their little locusts. And uh, there you have a Heart of the Swarm ZVZ. Pretty amazing, wasn't it? Uh, kind of crazy. Fairly good back and forth. Uh, I know down here in the Diamond League, a lot of times games are ended on a timing push. They don't really go back and forth a whole lot, but this one had a decent amount of it in it. And hopefully I'll get quite a few more little sw Heart of the Swarm games in here while my uh, buddy's down with his account, his CD key and whatnot that I can use. His beta key, I should say, not CD key. Um, but uh, let's see. Let's, let's jump out and look at the grass real fast and then wrap this baby up. Star Station was the name of the map. We did a one versus one on Star Station. That's the Diablo 3 looking map, uh, the heaven like platform or whatever you want to call it. 28 minute long game. Overall score went heavily into my favor. Those swarm hosts, that new unit usage. Oh, yeah, it gave it to me. Resource collection rate. Yeah, you kind of saw bits of that throughout. There was a couple places where he had the advantage, but I took it back and had most of it for most of the game. Army value says we were really even until I built 20 swarm hosts. <laughs> uh, and then this, you know, resource collection. I guess I was getting, this is, I didn't really up my production right. I wasn't getting the right units right in through here when I was staying even with him. And I had my expansion just ahead of him. So when I saturated that expansion, I wasn't producing out of it right to begin with. And uh, then eventually I used all my bank and boom, made swarm hosts. <laughs> So there you have Heart of the Swarm ZVZ. I'm not sure exactly what matchup I'm going to bring next, but it's probably not going to be Zerg oriented at all. So it's going to be Terran or Protoss, one side or the other or both, or God knows what. So thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.